Welcome to another video of Golfing with Jen. In today's video, we're going to be accompanying Auntie Angela here of the Red Tees at Quota Permise back 9. The Red Tees at Quota Permise playing right around 5,500 yards. With today's conditions, we've got some very soggy ground, so let's see how we navigate this golf course from a shorter distance, but let's see how we can tackle its tricky greens. If you've watched my other Coda Per Mile vlog, you would know that this position is somewhere I'm familiar with, whether it's from the blue tees or the red tees. So I definitely need to figure out a better strategy on this hole because I always tend to run out of fire on the right side, which leaves me in these trees. Today, I felt like I could get myself through this hole that I found here. The only thing that I really have to focus on here is making sure that I get the right trajectory because as you can see, we've got that nasty cow grass at the bottom, which can definitely pull the club so you do have to be careful of that on the right side of this hole. So after all that, I did leave myself on the putting green. However, this was about a 60 foot putt, so I was all the way on the other side of the green. Definitely not complaining when I leave myself a putt after giving myself a bad position. But this part definitely did not turn out the way I expected it to. As you can see, that pretty much had no chance. Uh, you can see right here is the challenge of Kotapamai. The slopes can really take the ball away from the hole. So as you can see better from this clip as well, past this hole, everything was just going away from it towards the front of the green, which I didn't really see from the first part, obviously. So left myself with this long part, gave it a go, but just wasn't meant to go in on this one. We will have to take the bogey in the first. So not off to the best starts there, but we do have a short par 4 here on the second. It's playing 279 all the way to the pin, which is all the way on the back of the green. So there is bunkers trapping the left and the right side on the front of the green so I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make the screen, especially with the conditions. So I was trying to favor more towards the right side here and I was actually trying to aim towards the bunker on the right side because that's going to give me a much better angle to approach this pin. If I was to miss this left, it's going to be a very very difficult chip. So I think you can see here I've got a pretty clear angle to the pin which is what I was hoping for. Unfortunately I didn't have the best of lies because it was kind of an upslope and a downhill slope. Um, so meaning that there was no way I was going to be able to stop or spin this ball because it was going to come up pretty hot. So I was just trying to get this as close as possible here from 40 yards with a 58 degree wedge. A lot of people have this misconception that shorter means easier but a lot of times it actually means you need more accuracy and like kind of like different shots because you're not just like hitting full shots into the green all the time you have to be a little bit creative most of the time so it gets pretty interesting so this is where my ball ended up like i said it didn't check so it pretty much released over the pin i have a pretty quick and slick putt here so I was really just trying to get this as close as possible. There is as well a hole where they cut the green, which I thought was going to be a factor as well. I don't know if you could tell, but my putter face kind of got stuck on the backstroke, which was kind of why I kind of accelerated too much through it and left myself with a longer putt than I wanted to. So an important par save there as we move on to the next par 5. 
so for this part 5 i'm not going to be able to carry the last bunker there so i do need to aim towards the left side of that bunker just try to keep this on the fairway to give myself a chance to go for this green So I got myself on a good position here on the fairway. Unfortunately, it's a bit of an odd slope. So as you can tell, this hole goes uphill. But I've also got a bit of a downhill lie. So I didn't think that my ball would have enough carry to go all the way onto the green. There's also a tree overhanging the left side. So I was definitely favoring the right side here, just taking all those bunkers out of play. So even though I said I was favoring the right side, I went a little bit too far right and this was actually a very very difficult chip because where I was going to land the ball if I were to carry it there, it was going to be entirely downhill. So I kind of had to land it short of the green but if I land it short because of the conditions today, there is a chance that the ball is not going to bounce up. So I didn't really have too much of an option here, I just had to play to give myself a putt. So I went with a higher percentage shot here going to 54 degree, just going to land it somewhere around the ball that's just short of the green. I know it's not going to be close but at least I'll give myself a putt. So this is one of those holes where I definitely would have been much more comfortable hitting like a 70 yard, 80 yard approach shot into that green because I feel like I would have had a chance to attack this pin as compared to where I was just now because like you could see it was a very difficult chip shot. However, there is of course the benefit of being able to potentially reach the green in two. So it's one of those risk rewards where you go for it and if you hit a good shot, you might give yourself a good chance for eagle. If not, you're, you know, you're just playing it as a regular par 5. So with it being a shorter hole, obviously that's the advantage of being having that option to go for the green in two. So moving on to the next hole which is this par 4 which definitely looks a lot different from this tee box. Those bunkers are definitely out of play but I do want to make sure that I kind of keep it towards the right side of this fairway because as it has a little bit of a dog leg left and I can't really tell where the pin position is for today. If you're too far towards the left you do have a chance of being blocked by those trees so definitely favoring the right side here. After a good drive, we've only got 85 yards here, but I think you can see that one of the characteristics of Kota Parma as well is that you rarely ever get a flat lie. I feel like for most of today, the ball has been above my feet, which also makes it a little bit difficult to have a lot of spin on the ball. So this definitely makes it a bit tricky as well to get the ball really close to the hole. So next up, we have a pretty short par 3 but it's definitely not an easy one as you can tell from the green here. It's 122 yards playing 118 yards today. So one of the things that I said in the beginning was that just because it's short doesn't mean it's easier. And of course, like over here, I'm hitting a pitching wedge and I still have to hit a good pitching wedge in order to give myself a good chance for birdie. I think the biggest difference that you can see when you're playing a short course versus when you're playing a long course is that you're going to minimize those errors because you're going to have more chances to hit more greens because you have shorter clubs. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be scoring better. It just means that you're going to be probably having 
a smaller margin of error. So like I said, you still have to hit the shots and you still have to make the putts. Next up, we have a tricky par 4. Um, for this tee shot actually, the ferry does get pretty really narrow up there because the water hazard comes in a little bit. But I felt pretty confident in my drive today that I was going to be able to give myself enough room to still keep this on the fairway. So you can kind of see why I said this ferry gets a bit narrow as well. There is a big slope that kicks everything towards the left which is where the water hazard was. And again, we don't have a long shot in but we've got another tricky lie. So we've just got to try to hit a good shot here and hopefully get it close. Definitely the biggest observation from the red tees is that the drives have to be more aggressive but there are less hazards in play in the sense that like I can carry the bunkers easily so they're not really in play but I have to be more aggressive as in I have to take a more aggressive line um, and then with the approach shots I tend to have to be more creative because I can't really just hit full shots so some of the shots especially when I have like some odd distance wedges is actually more difficult depending on the pin position as well some of the pin positions makes it very difficult to approach that when you don't have a full shot into it So we've reached the last hole of this course vlog which is a par 5 and I think definitely the biggest advantage playing off the front tees are going to be the par 5s for me because this gives me an opportunity to go for the greens. However, as you can see we're still playing decent length par 5s. In fact, there's a lot of par 5s on tour which are around this distance. So I would say that Kota Parmai is definitely a challenging course where it's played from the whites, the reds, the blues, the blacks. It just poses different challenges. 
but it's always fun to challenge yourself from different tee boxes. So especially if you've played a golf course many many times, why not try playing it off different tee boxes because you will really see a whole new perspective of the course and like I said previously, you still need to hit the shots, you still need to make the putts. Just because you play something shorter or something longer doesn't mean it's going to make it easier or harder. It's just going to be a different kind of challenge. As we know, golf is not a game where anything is really easy. So you still need to achieve the birdie, the eagle, whatever it is, regardless of whether it's 100 yards or 200 yards. So step outside your comfort zone and play different tee boxes this year. It's also very fun and exciting to be able to go for par fives in two and to make more birdies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next Golfing with Jen.